Hi and welcome to learn A-level biology for free with Miss Estrick. In this video we're going to be going through genetic diversity and natural selection. So first of all genetic diversity this is the number of different alleles of genes in a population. So we've got a representation here showing lots of different colours representing the number of different alleles for a particular gene in that population. A natural selection can only occur if there is genetic diversity. So if you do have a range of different alleles. Natural selection then, this is something you should be familiar with from GCSE, but it does go into a bit more detail. So the first thing is knowing that natural selection is a process and the end result is evolution. Evolution is the change in allele frequency over many generations in that population. So we've got an example here which is representing antibiotic resistance in bacteria. The different colours are representing the level of resistance and in the original population we can see there is genetic diversity for the resistance gene because we have um, a range of different alleles. After selection, we now only have two different alleles, and then over many generations, we can see we only have those two alleles, and they're in a different proportion to the proportion they were originally. So we've had this change in allele frequency. Natural selection results in the species becoming better adapted for their environment. And again, if we think about antibiotic resistance in bacteria, compared to the original population where some individuals had very low resistance to antibiotics, the end population after many, many generations of natural selection are now all more adapted to their environment, which in this example would be inside of a human who is able to take antibiotics. Now that's just one example of adaptations that you can see, but adaptations can be categorised into anatomical, which means any structural features. So that could be linked to the idea of um, the shape of a beak of a bird. Physiological is to do with the different chemical reactions within the body. So it might be linked to um, different quantities or different types of chemicals or enzymes an organism has. And finally, behavioural. So this is to do with how the organism behaves um, to try and increase its survival. So penguins huddling together to keep themselves warm in the cold. So the whole process then of natural selection, um, and we're going to link it to this example of fur colour in mice and vision ability in owls. As we go through, I'm highlighting what the key marking points are. If you were to answer um, the question, describe the process of natural selection as a long answer question. So you always have to start off by pointing out there is genetic diversity and what causes it. So new alleles, which is going to increase the genetic diversity, is caused by random gene mutations. Now, if the new allele that is created by this mutation happens to increase the chances of survival for that individual in their particular environment, because they're alive, they're more likely to be able to reproduce. So if we link that to the examples we've got over here, looking at the mice first, we do have genetic diversity because so we've got two different alleles at least. We've got an allele coding for grey, allele coding for white, and we've got that range. Now what they're telling us here is mice with light fur are hunted. You do still get some of the dark fur ones being hunted, but it looks like the dark fur is the selective advantage. So they are more likely to survive. Now, if they're more likely to survive, that means they're able to reproduce and therefore they're going to be able to pass on that advantageous allele to the next generation. And as that continues, that process over many, many generations, over those generations, you'll see that you do get this change in allele frequency. And you'll find that that new allele will now be very, very common in that population in that particular environment. And we've got the same idea here with the owls to do with their um, eyesight, whether it's poor eyesight or good eyesight. If they have good eyesight, they're more able to see the mice. Therefore, those are the ones that are getting the food, more likely to survive, more likely to reproduce, and you have that change in the allele frequency. There's two types of natural selection that you need to learn as well. So it's still exactly the same process that we just went through, 
but this is linking to the particular trait which has the selective advantage. So within your population, we said there's genetic diversity, there's a range of alleles for the genes. And in this example, we're thinking about antibiotic resistance. So the red line is representing the number of individuals in the original population, and the X is showing resistance level, the X axis. So we've got very, very low resistance, we've got a medium amount of resistance, and then high resistance. So in the original population, we don't really see much antibiotic resistance. However, over many generations, we can see that this trait is now being selected for. So directional selection is when one of the extreme traits has the selective advantage. Now, this is only going to occur if you have a change in the environment. So in the antibiotic resistance example, that would be if you had bacteria inside of the host, which could be the human, the original environment would be no antibiotics. So all the bacteria can thrive and being resistance to antibiotics would not be an advantage. However, if there's a change in that environment, and in this example, that would be the human starts taking antibiotics, any individuals that have the mutated allele that makes them resistant now have the selective advantage, and they're the ones that are able to survive, reproduce and pass on that allele. So over many generations, we'll see this shift and you'll then have far more individuals will have this extreme trait, which in this case is resistance to antibiotics. In contrast, stabilising selection, this is when whatever the modal trait was originally, so in the original population, that still remains the trait that has the selective advantage and it remains the most common. So this happens when there's no change in the environment. So that means whatever was the allele or the trait that gives the selective advantage will still remain to be the trait that gives a selective advantage. So over many generations, what we see is more and more individuals have that modal trait and the extremes are lost. So you start to see this decrease in standard deviation. You have a decrease in the range of alleles in that population for that particular gene and far more of them have that particular trait. So the example linked to this is human birth weight. So human birth weight, if you are incredibly light when you're born, you're more likely to potentially have underdeveloped organs and have complications linked to that, and that will hinder your chance of survival. The other extreme, very, very large birth weights, can lead to complications in childbirth, which then puts you and the mother at risk of surviving. So middling birth weights are the selected advantage, and that's why over many, many, many generations of human reproduction, we then have this middle trait being the most common and most babies weigh somewhere between six and nine pounds. So that's it for genetic diversity and natural selection. If you do want to subscribe, then please click the button and give it a thumbs up if you have found this helpful today.